Well, I, I'm a big advocate of social media, so I think uh, getting on Twitter at the first, at the very start, is everything. I, it's always the first piece of advice I give to any startup to get um, involved in doing their own, um, you know, marketing and their own uh, public relations. Definitely is the main main thing. Um, that's. Uh, the key. Oh, and why? Why do I say that? Because it's it's an open platform, and you can really network really well and find uh, your, your uh, early adopter user base there, um, and in any country that you know uses Twitter. Well, yeah, I guess you can't really say. I mean, we use it so much today, but that's a, that's a good point. I mean, I really can't see. I don't. I couldn't see the future of how it works. It'll probably evolve more than stop, right? I mean, we're talking today about how the print newspapers will probably eventually die in 10 years, but newspapers will continue in a different form, which will probably be digital or whatever, right? So, you know, nobody can see like uh, MySpace dying uh, after it was super successful, right? It just one day just died because a competitor came out. So really, it's honestly, it's, a, it's really tough to call the technology the future because uh, it's just impossible. Like Apple is a leader right now, but then Samsung is also competing with them, right? So it's really hard to, to say for sure that it's just a trend, but definitely, if it's social media, it will definitely evolve into something new. It will definitely not go away. I think people are getting into the fact they can communicate with anybody through the internet, so I think that it will definitely stay, but it may have a different form in the next 10 years. Well, I think that anybody has to use this kind of social media. If they're, if they're dealing with humans as customers, they'll definitely need some sort of social media um, element to their, to their marketing, for sure. Um, because even, even like uh, in New York, they have those, uh, those trucks that sell food, so they're like the mobile trucks that sell tacos and hamburgers and things like that. They use Twitter to, to announce where they are and things like that. So that's not a high-tech product, right? It's very low-tech, but they use the social element of social media to get people to come in to eat it and then take a picture of it and then tell people they ate it, right? And get, and get you know, generate buzz from there. So that's definitely, I mean, social media is all about conversation. So it doesn't really matter what product you're selling. As long as you, if you have, you're trying to reach humans, then this is a very important element. Where they should go, um, I guess it depends on what it is. I guess the, I, I, I'm looking at different groups online, Facebook groups or Google Plus groups. There's a lot of different places they can go online to find other people like that. In Asia and Hong Kong, we do a lot of uh, networking events for people to meet co-founders of ideas. So I always think that that's still the best, right? You have to meet people in real life. So it's hard to meet people online if you want to do something together. But maybe it's also good if you mean just in general about meeting other people, like-minded people, definitely. You know, the social, me social media platforms like Facebook and Google Plus are, your, are good places to go. I think creativity will always be it, right? Technology, again, is just another a channel for it, right? So definitely creativity is the most important thing because, uh, I mean, Facebook is really interesting, but it wouldn't have been created unless somebody had the idea to make it, right? And, and join it together and call it Facebook and likes and, and pokes and things like that. So definitely the creative side is the strongest and most important thing. And that creativity is missing from a lot of tech com technology companies because they just end up copying somebody else's idea and changing it. Definitely doing it. That's number one thing. I think a lot of people start a blog and it gets, it's difficult to, to maintain because they have a busy lifestyle, we're at a conference all day um, and people don't have time to do it. So I think maintaining a, a, a schedule is the most important thing. It's like going to the gym. If you don't just go to the gym once a week, you have to make sure you go to that same day. It's the same with your blog. I think that's the most important thing. And then second of all, it's like promoting it to like-minded people or people who may be interested in it because you can still just post stuff. And I've seen it work. You just post things and thanks to Google, it'll just organically feed into the, into the uh, internet and people can find it that way. But I think if you actively pursue people who are like looking for similar content, like for instance, you have a photography blog, you find other photographers, it's, more, it's easier to grow a, a, a readership from there. And as you grow the readership, you feel happier and you'll, you'll keep doing it, right? I see that with a lot of uh, fashion bloggers um, in Hong Kong that do it. They get a lot of good feedback and so it's like incentivizing them to continue and making it more frequent. Um, that is not, not really, there's not a lot of, uh, that's a good thing about Hong Kong, even though it is part of China, there's a, the freedom of speech is quite open, so people can really criticize the government, and they do, they take advantage of that fact. Um, I think most of Asia is like that, um, there's some, some sensitivity in the Southeast Asia countries, and of course in China, but the rest of it's pretty open. Um, but yeah, I think those kind of things are going to stunt the growth of Asia as a, as a major um, player, because if you're, you know, censoring these kind of things, and then it's, a, so like we learned today, um, the government, uh, deputizes the businesses to censor, censor uh, content. So there's like two levels in between of this thing. So there's, everybody has to be their own policeman or they're going to get in trouble as well. So, you know, you, and then the, the, the words of, that are sensitive change every day. So you have to keep up the data of what, what's sensitive. That seems like a job by itself, right? So how is that going to grow? I don't know. But that, that's, a, that's a bigger political question that I'm sure plagues other countries besides Asia. But 
and that's why I guess in the, in the United States it's it's easier to like launch these things because this kind of sensitivity isn't like such a big factor in slowing down the development of uh, their, their their economy and their their businesses. I think that. Um, Doing your own business is very attractive to a lot of people. They like to um, be able to control their own destiny, right? It, before, in the old day, it was never like that. You have to go get a job and, and, and live that job. Like in a lot of Asian countries, you've got to live that job for the rest of your life. So, but the thing is, you could be fired at any time. So that kind of uncontrollable destiny is not really sits with a lot of people. And now we've seen a lot of people become successful doing their own businesses. I think that people are, are attracted to try that out, right? It's always better to have given it a shot than never have tried it at all, right? That's an old saying. But I think nowadays, and because everything is so much cheaper than back in the dot-com day where you need a lot of money to start up a web business, nowadays you can start things for like $100 US a month and you can have a business going online. I think people are more willing to try that. It's an attractive lifestyle. You don't have to go to a boss, you're your own boss. I think that's a, that's a major thing. And then other people want to um, help the world, I think, with new services that can help make things easier. And that's a, I think that's the one thing I really like working with startups is because they have that kind of mentality. It's not just, hey, how can we make money online, you know, selling something or whatever. It's about, you know, how can we change the way things are done to better things. Like Evernote's a great example of that. You know, I hate notebooks. I have tons of notebooks. I hate it. I can never find it. You can never look at stuff. Now everything's online and it's easy to, to search for everything you've ever written down. So this is like something that helps change the world. So I like to see these kind of technologies and this kind of startup um, ideas. There's a lot of things that people do in startups that, that used to generate creativity, right? And I think that's the basis of that because you have to do a lot of different jobs. You have to do it fast and you have to, do, and you have to make sure you make little mistakes. So I think the creativity factor comes in a lot. Um, you, know, one, you know, one company in the States, uh, one startup, has like no meeting Wednesdays. So the middle of the week, you know, this is something they just created out of nowhere, but it helped them to cr be more productive. So the idea is that it's out of necessity that creativity is very strong in, in startups, I find. Like they don't have to follow normal rules. Like, you know, it's not like, hey, let's make a, you know, pink giraffe. That's not creative, right? But creative is just how make their workflow more efficient and also just think about these kind of different uh, things. I think it's very interesting. What's my first impressions? I'd, I think it's fantastic. It's a very good, a very exciting uh, conference. I think that the quality of the participants is very high. I think that the international scope is really well. I think there should be more people from Asia here, definitely. Just because of the fact, not because I'm from Asia, but because I think that um, Asia really ha can learn a lot from this side of, uh, of Europe. Um, and, uh, and they haven't seen a lot of snow before, so I think that's also a big benefit. But uh, the communications um, industry is, uh, I think, one that's kind of misunderstood and maybe also in Asia downplayed a lot, right? Because it's not always at the top of the list of a lot of businesses, as it sounds like it is more in Europe, right? Um, so I think that that's a very important part, that the more people come out here to see this kind of thing and interact with these kind of businesses and these people that are here, or we'll bring them over there, maybe you do one in Asia somewhere.